Hi guys! Welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing good. Really good. I'm getting bigger. And bigger. I'm 16 weeks pregnant now. And it's going so well. I can't believe it. It's so different to my other pregnancies. I was so sick and I couldn't do anything. I definitely couldn't come out here and make things. But this time... <laughs> So today I'm going to make a special product that I'm actually making especially for me and my pregnant body. I have found that I cannot soak in bath bombs or anything with SLS in it at the moment. Since I've been pregnant, my skin doesn't like it at all. It's irritating me. So that means no bath bombs, no bubble bars, a lot of the things I usually love to bath in. So that's kind of a bummer. So it's made me get creative and find different things so I can still have a nice soak. I use plain Epsom salt or Epsom salt and I have this dead sea salt. Sometimes I use those together and just have a salt bath. That's really lovely and doesn't seem to irritate my skin. I also like to put oils in my bath and I know some people don't like that. They don't like the oily feeling, but I love it. So I've been, I made up with sweet almond oil and lavender and rosemary essential oil and a pump bottle and I use it as like bath and body oil. I can squirt some in the bath, I can rub some all over, I can even use some in my fluffy hair because I get really fluffy hair guys. So it's quite nice to be able to get a little bit and just put it in the ends to help your hair. Yes, yeah, so I love oil. <laughs> Rather than moisturizer, I like to rub oil on my skin if I can and in the bath. So with that in mind, I decided to make myself some lovely, botanical, herbal, delicious, luxury bath melts. And that's what we're going to make today. So I'm going to be using a whole lot of dried herbs and botanicals, as well as essential oils and cocoa butter and shea butter to create these delectable treats you can see in the jars behind you. And I have rose, orange, lemon and lang lang and lavender and rosemary. My rose has got rose geranium, so it's sort of got that bright scent, fresh like fresh cut flowers, rather than that sort of old rose scent that some people are used to. I like adding the geranium because I think it punches it up, makes the rose a bit younger. And I love I love rose and lavender to soak in, as well as orange and lemon. They're my favourite, and I find that the lang lang really rounds it out. Orange and lemon and lang lang essential oils together in equal parts. They smell like a fruju ice block to me. <laughs> and if you don't know what a fruju ice block is, it's just a certain kind of ice block we get in New Zealand. I think they get them in Australia as well. And it's like just basically juice, frozen juice on a stick. So you can get orange and you can get grapefruit. And yeah, this one, this blend of essential oils reminds me of an orange fruju for sure. It's so good. So sort of the Lang Lang sort of adds that sweetness that helps with all that sour lemon smell. So good. Okay, well, I'll stop waffling and we'll go make them, eh? Come along with me and I'll show you how to make luxury bath oil melts. Squee! All right, so first thing we're going to do is measure out our butters. Like I said, I'm doing a little bit of an experiment here because I haven't made these before. So I'm using cocoa butter and shea butter and I'm using, I think it was sweet almond oil in this first batch. But I move on, and in the second and third batch, I don't use any liquid oil at all. I found that they just came out better that way. They're more solid. I'm pretty sure that you'll be fine to use a little bit of liquid oil if you're in a cold environment, like I am right now. But because I plan to just put the final product into an organza bag, and it will stay in that, and then you'll throw that in the bath, I didn't want it to sort of melt or be squishy. I wanted them to be solid. So that little bit of liquid oil that you see me adding to this batch, I omit it from the second and the third batch completely. And I just go with cocoa butter and shea butter. You could also replace it with coconut oil. But once again, coconut oil at a warm and warmer temperature will get melty and squishy. If you're posting these or if you live in a warm environment, you don't want that. It's not going to be good. So I recommend using just cocoa butter and shea butter. It does make these a slightly more expensive pro project. It's more expensive to use the cocoa butter and the shea butter in higher amounts. And I tend to save them for, you know, lip balm, body balm, any leave-on stuff. Because that's where I feel like they are best used. But in this case as well, because like I said earlier, we're soaking in it. And our skin is going to get all of the benefits. So, 
you know, it's going to be good. Um, my first batch here is lavender rosemary, so I'm just adding my essential oils. I literally have lavender and rosemary essential oil here. And I have two roses. I have the rose and then I have the rose geranium. So the rose on its own smells very much like, you know, that sort of older, more mature rose scent. But the rose geranium, it has more of an earthy scent, more kind of green, I guess you might say. And I think, like I said before, I, I think it helps it to feel a bit nice and young rather than like an, your grandma's rose that you might be thinking of. So I'm now just putting some steel cut oats in. Oats are just wonderful for soaking in. They're a powerhouse for your skin. And I also have some sage leaves that's going in right now. I'm also going to obviously be adding lavender buds and rosemary. All dried, completely dried botanicals that I have collected and dried myself. And I've had them for a long time. Well probably last six months. Meaning to use them in you know different shampoo bar projects things that I was going to infuse oils to make shampoo bars but what I've come to realize is that to make shampoo bars using the cold process method that I'm familiar with it's just not the best for your hair something about the pH and I don't need to go into that but I basically think that you do you need to learn how to make the cinder bars if you're going to make shampoo bars and that's a whole other thing that I'm just not ready to take on right now I definitely want to look into it in the future so I had all these botanicals and this is a great way to use them they will keep for a while but it's like anything fresh is best we want to use them so I'm just adding heaps in there. It blows me away as I put more on and it just soaks down. And then there's still room to add more and more botanicals. They just keep sinking in. So you could go crazy. You could put way more than I did if you wanted to. Um, I actually found that the final product, my Orange Lemon and Lang Lang, which had orange peel in it, that one seemed to plump up the most in the bath. So it sort of rehydrated, if you will. The orange peel especially. And I loved how that felt. I could take the bag at the end of the bath and just rub it all over once I got out of the bath. I could just take that bag and essentially use it like a moisturizer all over my skin before I discard it. So it was like another little use for it. These ones came out pretty good, but they took a long time to set. And I do blame that on that little bit of liquid oil as well. And you can almost see it. They sort of want to get melty to the touch right away. And it makes me nervous, so I just want to quickly go ahead and unmold them and not hold on to them for too long. So I just do that, just go ahead and unmold them all. But they have all lasted fine in the jars. We haven't had any melty puddles. So I do think that this works as well. I just think that for my own peace of mind, I prefer it just using the two hard butters, the cocoa butter and the shea butter. It just guarantees you a solid final product. So yeah, I was definitely inspired by Lush and their bath melt that's called Keridwin's Cauldron. And it has all sorts of botanicals in it and it comes wrapped in some uh, cheesecloth. They, they tie it off with a little red thing and you can just plop the whole thing in the bath. I love that idea. So I'm using pretty little organza bags and I'm using colours to match the different flavours that I made. Um, they work so well. It's a really neat way to get the benefits of the botanicals without having them floating about in the water and getting kind of caught up in your hair and things. I've never been the biggest fan, even though it looks beautiful. Whenever you see a photograph of somebody and they're lying in the bath full of rose petals, for example, and you think that looks like luxury. <laughs> but whenever I've actually done that, I haven't liked it. I've, I don't like the way it feels having all these little bits of plant floating around in the water with me. But I do like the benefits that you get from having them. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. And it does create like a oily pool on the top of the bath water, which every part of your skin that's up by the surface, it just ends up coated in that beautiful oil. And then when you step out of the bath, you sort of pat dry rather than rubbing it all off. And you can sort of rub it into your skin it's just a luxurious treatment. I really, really like it. Obviously, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I've actually met quite a few people at markets who don't like any sort of oily residue. And that was why I mastered the whole emulsified bath bomb thing where you can add cocoa butter and you can add oils. But as long as you add the right amount of you know, your emulsifying agents, whatever they are. In my case, I use polysorbate number 60 and I use SLS. 
but I'm, I'm phasing the SLS out because of my own personal preference. I'm not finding that my skin is loving it. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame because I do love the big bubbles, but that's okay. You just have to go with it, eh? You have to listen to your skin, and my skin's telling me no to SLS right now. <laughs> so yeah, this one has rose petals, and it has the steel cut oats, but it also has the little tiny rose geranium flowers, which are so adorable. And I wish that I had put more in, actually. I noticed that by pouring the liquid in first and then putting the botanicals in, I could sort of fit more botanicals in. But it also depends which botanicals you're using. So once I've got the oils in, I do kind of poke them in and I go back through and put even more on. And then I wait until these ones are almost set before I put the last little rose petal on the top. Because I just think it looks really pretty with one rose petal right on the top, sort of like a decoration. These um, other bits going in are the orange peel, like I spoke about before. So the first batch was the lavender rosemary, and the second batch that I just poured is the rose geranium, and this final batch is my orange lemon and lang lang. And I'm going to add steel cut oats again to these because I think oats are fantastic. So they went in all of them. And I'm going to add calendula, dried calendula petals to this one. And again, it blew me away how many calendula petals I actually managed to fit in there. And it just makes for a really, really beautiful little bag of botanicals to soak in. <laughs> I really like it and I have actually been real stingy about selling them. I've only sold some to close family members and the rest I'm like, no, they're mine. Mine! <laughs> but you guys could totally make these and customize them to whatever flavor you wanted. You could add different botanicals to match and you could just get really creative with this. So I thought it was important to share this with you. And I'm sorry about the lighting not being very good. I'm actually working in my kitchen, which I don't often do. We are preparing to get the house ready to put it on the market. So that's exciting, but I'm trying to keep everything really, really clean and almost show homey, <laughs> which is hard because we live in here as well. So I actually ended up making a little bit too many with the botanicals here, ran out of butters, but it wasn't a problem. I just pick out these extra botanicals and add them to the other ones. It was a really, really fun little project to do and not very stressful, which is good because sometimes when I'm getting creative making my soaps and things, it can go pear-shaped and end up being a bit stressful and this was not the case with these. I was having the time of my life. They did smell pretty strong and everybody complained that the kitchen smelled like essential oils for the next day. <laughs> but hey, that's just one of the perils of living with a soap maker, right? <laughs> these jars that I got for like $3 each at the warehouse and I think they're supposed to be for like coffee sugar and tea bags. I love them for this purpose because they're lovely and see-through so you can tell that the little gold bags are the citrus ones, the little purple ones are lavender and then the ones in white bags are the rose ones and I just reach in and pull one out and throw it in the bath whenever I want to which is really wonderful and they look beautiful in the bathroom it's a beautiful bathroom accessory it's like makes the bathroom look kind of flash and I'm kind of low-key advertising star soaps while I'm also advertising my house <laughs> win win so yeah um I actually think that if you add a little bit of bubble bath alongside one of these melts I've been using a shower gel that I really love called happy hippie it's again from lush Put a little bit of that in and you throw one of the bath melts in and it helps to counteract the oily factor you still get the oils in the bath but yeah so that's one way but obviously the bubble bath can contain sls and it can irritate your skin and i just have to be really careful about that at the moment if i just use the bath melt on its own i still get a beautiful bath that smells great and i get to spoil myself 
<laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me make these and I do hope that you give them a try yourself if you do and you want to share pictures of your creations then come over to Star Soap's family group that's on Facebook just go into Facebook into the search bar search Star Soap's family you'll find us uh, we love to see what you guys are creating especially with us all being in these fairly trying times just sharing each other's creative process and each other's you know beautiful creations can really help to l uplift somebody else change their entire day and put them in a happy mood so if you guys want to come and join we'd love to have you and yeah i do hope that you enjoyed watching me make these as much as i enjoyed making them and using them they are a beautiful treat especially if you have somebody that you love that has delicate skin and they can't use some of the other products well i hope you guys have a wonderful day and remember to love each other and feel that soapy love. I'll see you next time. Bye.